Hello, people of the internet. I'm Dirk Grumman, and welcome, 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 welcome to week three of season something or other of the PTL. I am Di Gremlin, proud coach of the South End Stallions, and this week we are taking on David, David Ryan, coach of the Tynamo Bucharest. Ah, now David, 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 boy, me and David, we got some history. Uh, we've played many, many a time, and every single time, it's been very one-sided. We're, we're something like, like four and four between us, maybe, and every time, whoever has won has completely thrashed the other. So we'll see if we can keep that streak up, but being on the winning side this time. Because um, uh, we, we've had a decent start to the league, a little bit of luck on our side, but uh, nonetheless we are 2-0, and and it would be fantastic to keep that streak going. So looking at his team, um, nothing crazy here. Um, I I kind of felt like the Blastoise would come. Um, just to be kind of like a bulky thing that could take a hit from anything, and it'd be like a, a pseudo Nidor Queen switch in, like take one hit from Absol and hit it hard, something like that. Take a hit from Blacephalon as well. Um, but at the same time, it kind of didn't do too much back to me, so I feel like the six that he brought made more sense. I just thought he would bring the Blastoise. Um, now on my end, I am bringing a Choice Specs Lele, a Choice Specs Blacephalon, um, a Gudra with the Skitter Smack tech for the Hooper, um, a mixed Mega Absol, Sticky Webbing, Slurpuff making its debut, and a pretty bulky Nidor Queen. So now looking at his team, um, he has a couple of um, half decent leads. I feel like he's probably going to lead with Garchomp, um, and I, I would love to lead Mega Absol against him. I feel like it's definitely my best lead, um, and he has really nothing to take on Absol very well, but if he leads with Scarf Chomp, and Scarf Chomp is definitely very scary in this matchup, as you can see Earthquake kind of just demolishes me, because um, I didn't bring Rotom this week. Um, but yeah, so on the off chance that he is Scarf Chomp, I don't really want to have to make a big play turn one, um, so I'm just going to leave with my Nidor Queen, which can live a hit from Garchomp, because I am very, very bulky. Um, so I do lead off with my Nidor Queen, and he leads off with the Garchomp, um, and so I, I can live a hit, unless he's like Choice Banded, um, but he, he wouldn't be Choice Banded. Um, so th the thing is, is, if I'm more, a more offensive Nidor Queen, then I don't live a hit, so I think to myself, maybe he will stay and risk that and just Earthquake turn one. I don't think he should, he definitely should switch out, but just in case he chokes, I am going to go for the Ice Beam rather than the Stealth Rocks turn one. Like If I go for Rocks, lose 90% on my Nidor Queen and that's all I get up for it, that's a pretty bad start. So I just go for the Ice Beam. Um, and he goes in a Hooper, and I get the crit, but it does absolutely no damage. Um, so there's definitely a Salt Fest Hooper, um, which I expect to going into it, because, like, um, you know, I, I have quite a lot of special offense on my team, and um, it, it means this thing can potentially live a hit from Lele, and take it from Blacephalon pretty well, which both kind of otherwise run through his team. Um, but then this gives me a pretty tricky decision here. Um, I can't really lose my Nidor Queen. I can't really lose anything at this point in the game, but Hooper has the potential to one-shot everything. So I look at the Calcs, and I figure to myself that he's either going to go for the Psychic move, or make kind of a middle ground play and go for the Dark move. Um, maybe like a Hyperspace. Um, which means that my, my Tapu Lele can take either of those. It doesn't take them well, but at least I kind of know I'm going to live a hit, like, in order to kill my Lele, he has to go for a Gunk Shot, which is a pretty big play turn two. That's a pretty big play in front of a Nidor Queen. Um, so I, I don't really think he's going to do that, so I think I can go Lele, and thanks to that bit of chip damage, because I'm Specs, even with his Assault Vest, um, he is in range of Moonblast, so I can go Lele and start to pressure him offensively. So I go into my Lele, and we see he goes for a Psy Shock, and it does holy shit loads of damage. Like, <laughs> good lord, that was that was that was resisted. As was that Moonblast on Rotom. Um, but yeah, that just shows how strong Hoop is. Interestingly enough, though, he is special. I definitely thought it was going to be physical going into this, just because my team has a lot of natural special bulk. Um, but I guess Psy Shock makes sense as well. Um, but anyways, I just go for a Moonblast because, I mean. Psychic hits his team harder, 
but if I go for a Psychic and run at that Hooper and he stays in, I'm literally the dumbest person. So I just go for a Moonblast. Um, if he was a more offensive rogue, that would have two shot, or at least come close to it. So we see these definitely quite spadef. Um, but I can I can go Gudra very very safely on this thing and just pressure his team. But he actually doubles out to a Bombi. They were predicting that. Um, but I was kind of fine with that because I live a hit from Rubombi easy. Um, Specs does like a max 50% to me, and Fireblast one shots it. But annoyingly for me, he gets up webs. That's that's really bad. So now I have to get my own webs up as soon as possible. Because now, like, I have no Hooper switching, and Hooper outspeeds my whole team. So I'm like, oh dear, that is not very good. That will lose me game very quick. Um, but at least for Bombi, it's dead. Thankfully, I didn't miss the Fire Blast, and he wasn't uh, Focus Ash. Um, but now he goes into Garchomp, which, for me, is 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 wonderful. I That was the thing that I wanted him to go into there. If he went Hooper, ah, it could have been bad. But I think I would have lived a hit from Hooper. No, maybe I wouldn't because of Psychic Terrain. Hmm, not sure. Anyway, so he goes Garchomp, and my only switch in the Chomp is Slowpuff, which is the one that I want to get in and set up Sticky Webs with. So I'm completely, completely fine with this. I just go straight into my Quasi Cupcake. Take an Earthquake very well. That's not completely offensive Garchomp. That did very, very little damage. I can get up my webs for free. Um, so now he goes into the Salazzle, which is a huge threat if it is... um. Nasty plot, but Sligums can take a hit. He goes for a Toxic. I felt like he might go for a Toxic there, but like Sligums is just my safe switching. Um, so now I'm kind of worried that maybe he's kind of like the um, substitute on court Toxic set, which I look at my team and I'm like, that's a really annoying set for me. The only thing I can really do to stop that is go into my Nidoqueen. Queen. I still want my Gudra to be healthy. I would love it to be able to take a hit from the Hooper and smack it. Um, or live a hit from Garchomp and smack it, because based on the damage he did, I can live a hit from Garchomp pretty easily. Um, so I do just go into my Nidoqueen here. Uh, as he switches out into his Rotom Heat, and I'm completely fine with this. I need to get damage off on this Rotom for my all of my offenses to have a good time here. Um, so I don't really care about losing my Nidoqueen, but I want damage on this Rotom, and I want my rocks up. Those two things are very, very useful for me. Um, and I get both of those things out of this exchange. Um, he ends up going for a Volt Switch, which I'm not completely sure why he did that. Um, like, I guess he was going to do so little damage to something on my team that um, maybe I can preserve Nidoqueen as a sack for Hooper or Morlock later, because I have no switches to those things. I do need sacks. Um, but at the same time, I didn't want him to just pain split one of my healthy mons and get all of his health back, because then that exchange would have gone badly. So Nidoqueen gets the kill. Um, and now he can just go Hooper, and I can just sack my Nidoqueen to it. Like, it's it's done its job at this point. He goes for a Focus Blast, tries to catch Absol, which is kind of funny. Um, but now, speaking of Absol, I can go into it. He has absolutely no switching. I can go for a knockoff. Uh, nothing wants to take this hit. Nothing wants to take this hit. That does so much damage. Um, and gets rid of his Rocky Helmet, and I can Ice Beam very freely. He's like switching around, he's trying to play around this Absol, but it's just not going to work. My coverage is too good, and Absol is just too strong. I get Freeze, uh, but it doesn't matter this week, thankfully, because uh, I have the Fire Blast. Um, that would have been really bad if two weeks in a row I got did like the clutches Freeze in the world. Um, so now Salazzle comes in, and uh, I just sack my Lele, which looks like a really weird play because Gudra could have come in and taken a hit, but um, I was still kind of worried about if he was a sub-encore set, because now that my Nidoqueen is gone, that set can kind of just beat me. Um, he's not in range of Sucker Punch from Absol yet, but we see that he's not Heavy Duty Boots, which is fantastic, um, because, well, it means he takes a lot of rocks damage, so his, on his next switch, and he will be in range of Sucker Punch from Absol. So all I have to do is get him into that range and I win the game. Um, and I, like, Slurpuff was my least useful member here. But I, as I was about to switch into Slurpuff, I was like, well, again, if he's that subset, I can't break a sub with Slurpuff. Which means he gets a sub up and that's really bad. Because then I have to waste them on breaking the sub. And that's just like, oh, that's effort, man. I'm, I'm not about that life. Um, so I figured to myself, you know what? Actually, let me sack my Lele here. And then I can go into Blacephalon who can take any hit from this thing and one-shot it, 
and he actually has no switch in a Biblocephalon at this point in the game. So I go into Mr. Popcorn on his debut, um, and he switches out into Garchomp, uh, definitely just trying to sack it off here. But that clearly does a lot of damage and gives me a beast boost. And now, even though he is a Soul Fest Hooper, Mr. Popcorn is just far, far too strong. I knock out the Hooper, and that is going to be a good game. I resist the Salazzle's dual stab, and there is no way on Earth it is taking a plus two spec Shadow Ball from Placephalon. And that is going to be GG. So the pattern continues with me and David. Um, I don't know why we always have one-sided games. It's like someone make a good play in the beginning, and then it's just over. Um, so yeah, this was like kind of a straightforward-ish game. The matchup was definitely in my favor. Like I had no switchings to any of his things, but also he had no switchings to any of my things, and I had a slight speed advantage. Like Blacephalon outsped everything except Rabombi and Salazzle. But then it resisted both of those mons' dual stabs, so I kind of don't really care about those mons. Um, and Absol's just absurdly good here. Like, Absol hit the field, and he's just like, oh, well, what wants to die? Probably some. Um, so yes, uh, that that is it for this week. We we take the win. We move to 3-0, and which is many wins for not many losses. Luck has been on our side this season so far, but... You know, you you got to ride your luck. you got to make the most of it. Um, you know, 3-0 is a fantastic start to the season. Last season, at this point, I was like 0-10 or something like that. I, I can't remember. Um, all I know is I'm doing better this season than I did last season. And I, I won last season, so pff, I don't know. Um, that is it for this week. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye!